let's be honest, dogs are so much better than people. That's not to say that people are useless, but even on their best day, your average human just doesn't measure up. They'll never be as sweet, loyal, affectionate, or brave as a dog can be. Dogs don't judge. They always have time for you, and they know the value of a nap. Today, we're going to talk about a woman who trusted few people but could always rely on her little dogs. She was a philanthropist, a diplomat, a philosopher, and a musician. This is the story of Princess Wilhelmina of Prussia, the Margravine of Bayreuth, Brandenburg. Bayreuth is located in the German state of Bavaria. It's a medium-sized town on the Red Main River in a valley between the beautiful mountains and the Franconian Jura. The town's roots date back to 1194. It boasts well-manicured public parks and stunning views of nearby mountains. More famously, it is forever linked to the composer Wagner, father of light motifs, giant brass sections, and people who stand and sing for three hours at a time. But it is also known for its Baroque architecture. These magnificent buildings exist thanks in large part to our subject today, Princess Wilhelmina. When Wilhelmina's husband succeeded to rule the principality in 1735, the pair set about turning the modest hamlet of Bayreuth into a miniature Versailles. Their many building projects included the Hermitage, a sprawling palace complex, performing halls, and the University of Erlen. Hello and welcome to Stories by Lamedia Music Works. I'm your host, Elaine Schaller. Like many of the women in our series, Wilhelmina von Bayreuth was trapped by her sex, having major decisions made for her by the men in her life. She was the eldest surviving child of King Frederick William I of Prussia. And from an early age, a good marriage was strategically important. Her mother pushed hard for Wilhelmina to marry her nephew, the Prince of Wales. But negotiations with England over the marriage contract were a disaster. Instead, they looked into the House of Habsburg. But that didn't work out either. She was eventually married off to her kinsman, Frederick, the future Margrave of Bayreuth, Brandenburg. It was a terrible match. Frederick, let's call him Freddy, was fragile and ill-suited to govern. He had a pronounced lisp and preferred humanities to politics. Wilhelmina, however, had a strong mind and an outgoing personality. These qualities were better appreciated by her younger brother and confidant, Frederick, another Frederick. But this Frederick would eventually become Frederick the Great, King of Prussia. The two shared an unhappy childhood and grew to count on each other for support. Their father had a notoriously fierce temper and would often beat his son while mocking his artistic nature. At the same time, Wilhelmina was horribly abused by her governess to the point of almost crippling her. Sadly, the two would bond further by helping each other through their equally lousy love lives. As a teen, Frederick fell in love with a young military officer and friend of his sister, Hans Hermann von Katten. Due to the king's ferocity over Frederick's previous love affairs with men, the couple decided to flee. Wilhelmina helped them to an attempted escape to England, but they were double-crossed by a member of their own crew and imprisoned. Since both men were army officers, the king accused them of treason. He then forced his son to watch as von Kata was swiftly beheaded. Frederick was then exiled to the military border where he received a vigorous education in statecraft and ultra-masculinity. Meanwhile, Wilhelmina's father sought the good PR of a royal wedding. Of course, this could only be achieved by imprisonment and threats of execution but Wilhelmina ultimately accepted the situation. For the majority of their marriage, the couple were at odds. 
Freddie flaunted his infidelities and was increasingly annoyed by his wife's popularity and political intervention. They began to lead separate lives. <laughs> Freddie and Wilhelmina did share a love of the arts as well as a desire to build Bayreuth into a cultural mecca. Their accomplishments attracted renowned artists, musicians, and philosophers, including Voltaire, who was a frequent visitor. Like many of her siblings, Wilhelmina was a gifted composer and patron of music. Her harpsichord concerto is still in print today and can be heard in concert performances and on several acclaimed recordings. She wrote eagerly for the flute, likely because both her husband and brother played and were pupils of quants. But it was in opera, particularly opera Syria, that Wilhelmina had her eyes set. In 1737, she established the Margravine Theatre Company and commissioned a new, elaborate opera house. This venue, now a UNESCO World Heritage Site, is one of the most outstanding surviving examples of Rococo theatre architecture in the world. It was here that she wanted to premiere her opera, Ingenore, for which she wrote both the score and the libretto. The score indicates that the opera was for the occasion of her husband's birthday in 1740. The subject matter for the opera seems a little strange though for a birthday celebration. You see, the date indicated is also the 10th anniversary of Van Katha's execution. And the subject matter is so politically motivated that when the manuscript was discovered shortly after World War II, it was decided to set it aside. The opera wasn't staged until the 1990s. The plot revolves around a tyrannical king named Ingenore. As the story unfolds, he enacts a series of horrific misfortunes upon the other characters. By the end of the opera, it's revealed that two of these characters are in fact his son and daughter. You see where I'm going here? Ingenore, the king, their father realizes the cruel part he played in making his children miserable. And in a sort of anti-deus ex machina, he boards a sea vessel, stabs himself, and dies. That's therapy through art. Unfortunately, the people of Bayreuth never had the pleasure to see their former tyrant fess up and off himself. It's likely that the premiere never took place. In a letter to her brother, Wilhelmina cries, My poor opera will vanish into thin air. We will have to turn our happy chants into funeral chants. Happy chants, huh? Well, for these two, it makes sense. In difficult times like this, she often turned to her brother for emotional support. Well, on him and on her dog. That's right, puppy kisses can fix anything. I'm sure you were wondering when we were going to tie in the whole dog thing. Wilhelmina and Frederick had a deep love for man's best friend. It's possible they found in dogs a constant source of companionship and unconditional love that was absent in their lives. Wilhelmina's favorite pup named Foldishon was her constant companion. She even had a portrait painted with the little guy. In fact, you can find Folichon popping up all over her favorite royal palace. It's here, 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 even here. Wilhelmina and her brother even exchanged letters written from the perspective of their dogs. Dearest Folichon, yes, people are thoughtless, fickle, self-serving, and inordinately ambitious. These faults are unknown to us. Dear Bish. People are really foolish, and they are seldom aware of it. We dogs possess less burdens and more virtues. I am not used to receiving gallantries. I have constantly preserved the strict chastity inherent of German women. Apart from one little adventure which spoilt my waistline. But I forgive Folichon what I wouldn't forgive a bourgeois dog. 
Excuse this long speech, it is only the introduction to a more gripping theme. Yes, dearest Bish, I adore you. I will not only accept your presence, but also your graceful paw. And I send you all the more gladly, my heart. Your loyal Bish. Think in the meantime of your loyal Folachon, who will always love and admire you. And daily a hundred times wag his tail in honor and in praise, Folichon. Over the years, Folichon became a bit of a mascot for the city of Bayreuth. In 2016, sculptor Achmal Hur immortalized him in sculpture and flash mob multiple statues all over town. And you can get your own Foley Shawn at Achmar's website for the low, low price of 80 euros. 160 if you want it signed. With the exception of a few sibling squabbles, and who doesn't have an occasional fight with their siblings, Wilhelmina remained close to her brother until her death in 1758. Ten years later, Frederick erected the Temple of Friendship at Saint Souci, his favorite retreat and dedicated it to his sister's memory. At the center stands a marble statue of Wilhelmina, lost in thought. And right there, under her arm, is of course, little Folichon. <laughs>